Welcome to episode three of the Momxiety Club podcast. Today's episode, we will be talking about how to help a new mom during the coronavirus pandemic while maintaining social distance. Welcome to the Momxiety Club. I'm your host, Tori Levine, a former mental health worker with degrees in psychology and criminal justice. So I know the importance of keeping calm in a difficult situation. But when I had my kids, I found myself full of anxiety, constantly questioning if I was doing things right or how I was messing up my kids now. One day, everything clicked, and I made a commitment to own my anxiety so it doesn't own me. And that's why I started the Momxiety Club podcast. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood. So join me and let's get rid of this momxiety together. Hello and welcome to the Momxiety Club podcast. I am Tori Levine, your host, and today I'm going to share my story about some of the things I struggled with as a new mom and how isolating and vulnerable I felt. And we are going to talk about some ways that you can help new moms now who are even more isolated and without that community due to social distancing and the coronavirus that is going on right now. So my story is as a first-time mom, back in 2014, I struggled. My emotions were everywhere. Uh, the lack of sleep, the inability to successfully breastfeed. I had a lot of issues there, which actually lasted far longer with my second child, uh, but that we can discuss on another episode. Uh, but there was definitely isolation, feeling like I could do nothing right, feeling like I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and I felt like I was the only one who really didn't know how to be a mom right away. I remembered from my baby shower, one of my friends had told me about a local new mom support network that uh, one of the local hospitals had facilitated. Additionally, then after I had a meeting with one of the lactation consultants from the hospital, uh, she had recommended I attend a La Leche League meeting because I was having a lot of difficulty. My, My son would not latch lots of different issues. So I remember very vividly uh, being worried about going to this, this group because I felt like everyone was going to be staring at me because I had to use a nipple shield. I had to use a syringe to feed my son pumped milk or like this tube through the nipple shield to feed my baby. And at home, it took myself and my husband, and we could have used another set of hands if we had, um, to help feed Ruben. So I was like, I'm not going to be able to do it there. Everybody's going to look at me. You know, they're going to see that I'm failing. Well, it was far different from that. I saw other people who were struggling I also saw moms who were chasing their toddler with a newborn latched (laughs) that they were nursing. And I was just like, oh my God, how are they doing that? They're super (laughs) woman. But I just, it was amazing to see various moms in this setting all together. Well, when it got to be my turn to start talking, I couldn't even start talking without breaking down, sobbing. And they, all the moms there were so supportive and basically lifted me up and gave me recommendations, told me some of the things that they went through that were similar or a little bit different and how they got through it. And really that's what helped me. What the advice they gave me sent me to a plastic surgeon for my son Uh, And he had a lip tie and a tongue tie that nobody had diagnosed or seen. So just that help from that one little meeting, that hour and a half out of my life changed the course of the next several years and the relationship I had with my baby and the ability to nurse and so on. 
So that was my first experience of learning how a village supported uh, new moms and how that knowledge of everyone coming together is what's really necessary for new moms. Well, after a few weeks, I finally got my son comfortable nursing. I was ready to venture out of the house again on my own and attend one of the new mom network groups. There, the first time or two, I sat back and I kind of just listened and just kind of studied the other moms to see how they were doing, you know, basically read their emotions and saw that they were, they were not 100% positive. I did ask a question. The first question I asked, I said, how do you guys feel about nursing in public? And they answered and they said how either they felt comfortable nursing in public with a nursing cover, without a nursing cover, they took bottles in public, or they didn't nurse at all. And they just fed with formula. So I got to hear the stories of all these other moms, as well as input from the nurse facilitator who was there, that really made a huge impact and difference in my confidence. Because they said, you're coming here and you're able to take care of your son here. You're taking care of yourself by coming here. You don't, there's nothing for you to be worrying about right now. We have all felt that way, but you were doing a great job. So that helped my confidence. And that experience really was one of the first experiences that, again, made me see how important that village of moms is for new moms. And what's so hard about everything right now is we are all isolated and distance from our friends and family. And for new moms, that's already an isolating time. If they, if you are not able to head out to a mom's group, if you don't have like library classes to head to because the library is not uh, holding them, or if there's not like a music group or a mom's group or the mom's network or these support groups where you are, how can you find that support and village through quarantine and social distancing? Well, as you probably have learned, there are tons of options for technology and connecting with people. And it is challenging to do with a new baby, but also makes things a little bit easier because you don't have to pack baby up and worry about germs. You can just go sit in your living room and chat with other new moms or chat with your friends or family via FaceTime or text or phone. Uh, When baby's napping, you don't have to worry about scheduling it around nap time. So for me, having that place, that group of moms to seek advice from and seek encouragement from and help encourage was one of the best things that I had during the early stages and actually first years of new motherhood. And if you are searching for a place like that, I invite you to the Momsiety Club. This was built from years of experience and years of working with many new moms through my mommy bar classes, which also had a component of that support group and kind of talk therapy throughout classes. Uh, And when quarantine happened and COVID hit, my first concern was how are new moms going to manage? There is no group for them anymore. So we started having new moms groups on Zoom and that was my hope to help new moms since I couldn't be attending these groups and moms couldn't attend them. I wanted them to be able to meet each other face-to-face online and just listen to each other's stories. So from that grew the this podcast and Mom's ID Club where you can post in our private group questions. We have our FaceTime calls, our 
chats and our group times as well as our exercise times because exercise helps that serotonin and helps us regulate our emotions and our moods. Additionally, I'm able to put out questions for the podcast. And at the end of the last episode, I put out uh, the question of what are some ideas or ways that you've been able to help a new mom in a socially distanced kind of way. And I got a lot of great answers back, both in the group and from other moms on social media. First off, and this is a great one, even without uh, having to be socially distanced, this comes from Kara Seaman. She said, dropping off a warm meal on the front porch in a disposable container also so that the mom doesn't feel like she needs to clean and return the dish. That is a wonderful extra little tidbit from Kara. So thank you for that. Several people recommended uh, gift certificates to local restaurants to help support uh, local economy, as well as gift certificates for DoorDash, Uber Eats, Instacart, Target, Walmart, grocery cards, gas cards, Amazon cards. Uh, those were from Lauren Wagner and Stacy Hockenberry. And Stacy also added going shopping for a new mom. If you don't have to worry about taking kids with you, run out to the store and maybe pick up if there's prescriptions at the pharmacy that are hard for someone to get out and go pick up with a new baby, as well as a few little things around the house that you don't have to be inside the house for. So like weeding or mowing the grass for them, um, coming and picking up the dog or cat to take them to a, if they need a vet appointment or just having a little time to take the dog for a walk so that that new mom can relax when the baby's napping or just take some time for herself. So thank you, Lauren and Stacy, for those recommendations. Lindsay Ranieri said that she used something called takethemameal.com. And this is a place where you can organize multiple different people to bring a meal to a new family. And I actually remember that one. Somebody had organized something for someone local that we helped participate in as well. So that was takethemameal.com. And there's also a different one called mealtrain.com. Erin Vale said taking meals, snacks, or even helping by possibly playing outside with an older child. So you are able to do that. You can wear a mask and also being outside. You don't have to worry about going inside with the newborn, but just giving the mom a, new, a chance to have some time by herself with the newborn uh, is very helpful. And I can attest to that from having a second one at home. Diana Cole recommended meals or diapers and errands, which we have, we already mentioned a few times. And there's just two more here. Kelly Rogers said food, homemade meals, takeout, restaurant delivery, grocery delivery, or trips to the store for necessities. And this was one of my other favorites that was out of the box. This is from Megan Bell. She said an Audible subscription or credits for late night feeding sessions, which was great because actually when both my sons were newborns, I went to Netflix and any other thing, I kind of got hooked on a series. So an Audible subscription, Netflix subscription, any of those streaming services subscriptions would be very helpful. Are you searching for a community, a place to find both emotional and physical support for the stress, anxiety, and overwhelm that comes along with motherhood? This is also a place where you can share the fun and joy of those little ones as well. But that's what we do in the Momsiety Club membership, and it's less than $10 a month. So thank you all, moms, for those great recommendations. If you loved these tips, please share the podcast with a friend. 
as well as head to momxietyclub.com and you will be able to find a PDF printout of these tips so that you can share them if you are a new mom and you would like some people to do this for you or just so you have some ideas for new moms in your life that you can do to help them out. So at the end of each episode, I ask a question and ask you to call in or send in your responses. We're going to talk about mom guilt, and I would love to hear your stories of times you felt mom guilt and what you have done to get over that mom guilt. You might just hear your story featured on a future episode. And while you're at it, let's take one thing off your never-ending future to-do list as a mom. To get the most out of the Momxiety Club podcast, hit subscribe so each new episode is sent directly to your phone. Would you like to help other new moms just like yourself? A very easy way to do that is to share the Momxiety Club podcast with a friend or go to your favorite podcast app and rate and review the podcast. These reviews help get the Bombsiety Club podcast in front of more moms just like you. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and follow the Momxiety Club podcast on social media, as well as subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast listening app. Head to the momxietyclub.com. That's M-O-M-X-I-E-T-Y. C-L-U-B.com. Thanks for listening. Now let's go get rid of this momxiety together. The Momxiety Club podcast is not intended to take the place of medical advice or therapy. If you are in crisis, call your local emergency number or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-237-TALK.